everyone should contribute to open source. And I do mean everyone. I think open source is an amazing thing. And I really wanted to make a video stating why. Like, if you're a developer, if you're a normal user and you just don't care about coding, you need to contribute to open source. I think this is a great thing. And probably the biggest thing about GitHub, which if you don't understand GitHub, I think it's just good. Everyone should learn GitHub. GitHub's amazing but it can be a little complex starting out. I've made like a how to do GitHub video just for most people, but I wanna just kind of share it for the non-technical people out there. How do you use GitHub in a way that makes sense? Now, most big projects will have like a releases tab where you can just go into the releases and download what you need. Uh, obviously some more of the more younger projects where they don't use GitHub properly, maybe not. I, I just started doing releases myself as I'm learning a lot about development and GitHub itself. Uh, over the past four or five years I've been doing this, this project itself has gone up to like the fifth most popular PowerShell project in the world, which is kind of insane, uh, coming from not knowing anything just as several years back. So, how do you contribute? The big thing here with issues is how you contribute. This is the most, like whether you're a developer, whether you're a normal person, you got to know issues and how to make issues work. There's sometimes issues are great. Sometimes issues are bad. It just depends on the program itself. So let's look at an issue real fast. I know this program pretty well. As you can imagine, I've been in Windows for a very long time, and I just worked out an issue in here and, and coded it and everything. But I want to launch it and show you a bug in the Windows toolbox. And you can still probably launch it today. I, I don't think I'll actually do this commit uh, quite yet and push it out as more testing needs to be done. But I'm going to show you what the release bug is, and it probably will still be there by the time you watch this video. We're going to go into tweaks and you'll see this num lock on startup. Well, it's currently off. What happens if we toggle that on? Oh, well, it's trying to reference and do a set item property of HKU, which is hotk users and hotk users isn't current users. And this isn't mapped in windows by default. I don't want to get too lost in the weeds here, but there's kind of a cool little thing about windows uh, where they just were lazy and they didn't map more than hotkey or hkey current user and an hkey local machine uh, with a PS drive. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So the fix to this was simply to add this right here, new PS drive, map hku to hk users. And that actually makes it all work. So this would actually fix it. So if we launch this release of the program, you'll see this fixes it. And this versioning is one of the beauties of GitHub, but it's important to document the issue. So when we look at this, I already fixed it in this one right here, number 2104. Let's document it in the issues and reference it. So we're going to go new. We're going to create a new bug report. We're going to call it numlock doesn't toggle. So we're going to take this is, let's just save this. We can describe the bug again, be as descriptive as possible when doing these issues. When selecting numlock on startup, it gives an error, HKU not found. Expected behavior, obviously. I don't want to go too far in depth because it's pretty darn obvious, but I do want to like add that screenshot. The big thing is with GitHub, you can add a whole bunch of stuff. Now, if you have a whole bunch of like big log, don't copy paste the big log. I see that all the time on GitHub drives me crazy. Just go attach file, attach the text file directly. That way people that are interested in it can actually click into the text file, but it doesn't bloat up the issue. Is that When you do that, most people don't like it. So now let's, we can either drag and drop there. If it's in your clipboard, you can just control V it. There's a lot of different ways. Let's go into our screenshots. I'm going to just grab this, paste it right in there. Just to drag and drop. Works on Windows, Linux, Mac, all of it, same thing. So with that, uh, additional context. 
So you can actually reference pull requests, commits, everything right here in. So we'll hit submit. And then we have all of that. And if we want to reference the code to describe this, you can do that in, let's say someone commits something and then it breaks uh, the feature or causes the bug. If you want to track it that far, if you are a developer, you can. And it's really easy to see where kind of everything is. It's all well documented. So issues are so powerful. It's like the biggest thing and the biggest contribution you can make to open source is getting really good at issues. The biggest thing you can do for a developer, learning the program and learning what bugs and issues that you can submit are. Most people get tied up in pull requests. Pull requests, great. I mean, they're cool. But more often than not, I deny more pull requests than I get. Because a lot of times I'm either like, oh, there's just... So many little things. So if you're interested in doing pull requests as a developer, this next section is targeted at you is there's a lot of pet peeves I have and many maintainers of projects have that I kind of want to just go over because it just really wasn't said in a lot of videos, right? I couldn't really find any videos that have like pull request etiquette. First, don't make massive changes. Like I lost many developers on my project just because I really just hated the way they submitted pull requests. I'm like, I can't accept this. This is just too many changes. And when we go to my pull requests, like I already know this developer right here, Marek, uh, he's an IT security engineer, sysadmin from 2016, right? Watch his pull requests. When we go to files changed, it's always clear and concise. It's usually one file, maybe 10 lines changed but he doesn't batch a whole bunch of changes and go, hey, I changed the world. Please accept my pull request. <laughs> He's a good developer. He's a good contributor. I love that guy. <laughs> He's great. So that's one thing. First, don't make massive changes. Second, don't make massive changes by doing formatting changes, changing everything from two spaces to four spaces because you're a tab guy instead of a spaces guy. Or, hey, you need to, you know, this wasn't camel case. So now everything is going to be camel case because I said it should be or the the one guy on YouTube told me to camel case everything. No, that's not your responsibility to fix those formatting changes. That's the project maintainer's job. So if he wants sloppy code, the code's going to be sloppy. You can't fix that uh, because... He will have no way of telling what the heck you changed if you changed anything on top of formatting. So all these will always get denied. The third thing, if it's a really complex pull request, there's a lot of different features, break up the pull request. You can see when I look at my pull request, a lot of my contributors, like I already said, him, look, he's, he's broken it up so many times that if there is something in here, like my drift user, also a really good contributor, You'll notice OG Merck. I've already talked about him. He's also a fantastic contributor. All of them are broken into different pull requests. That way, if they've done something in that pull request, I can deny that one, but accept their other work really easily. And it's way easier to read. So that's a really good thing to do in open source projects. And then just check the documentation for stuff. That's the big thing. Like, I think when people watch this video by Theo and you know, he's a developer and I've managed developers in the past and developers are kind of eccentric. So the title of this video is misleading. The video itself is actually pretty good. It goes through and says, hey, don't be doing pull requests on readme files for a free t-shirt and a hackathon. That's the too long didn't watch of it. But normal people didn't quite understand what he meant here. They kind of took the title at face value I even saw something on the WAN show where they asked Luke, hey, what kind of open source project would you want? And Luke was like, well, I, I watched a thing by Theo and, uh, you know, I'm not going to mention any open source projects you should contribute to. And I was like, OK, that's the wrong takeaway from this video. That was just just don't make bad pull requests. Everyone should contribute and make issues. That's that's the takeaway. Everyone should contribute to open source. There's no reason not to. And if you're a developer and you want to be better developer, you need to get into open source projects. You need to make your own. You need to contribute, not through pull requests necessarily, but start with issues. And then if you're like, hey, I really understand this issue. I've documented, I've put it up on there. Now let me make a pull request referencing this issue and a fix because the maintainer will be able to easily trace back, hey, what's this code? Oh, he's referencing this issue. Okay, cool, I looked at the issue. And then you can just pull up and see, 
why the code was changed, what the issue was, the rhyme and reason of it, and it makes his life way, way easier, and it just makes the world a better place. And it's fantastic. You evolve as a developer, you put so much good back in the world. That's why I said, hey, if you're interested in coding, you're interested in developing, you're going to suck when you start. You just will. You're going to make some bad ones by a bad pull request. Uh, as long as you're not just spamming pull requests and just changing a readme file to get like a badge or some crap on GitHub for a job interview or something. That's a problem. Sure. But it's a very small one that I don't really care. And usually when I see those people, I just ban them from the project. It's not that big of a deal. Everyone should contribute to open source. And I love it. It changed my life so much for the better. And that's where I'm going to leave this video. I love open source. And I love the people that contribute, even the people that try to contribute. As long as you have good intentions, I don't care, man. I think it's great that you you want to give back. And I really appreciate it. And I know some developers do send me pull requests, and I'm sorry, I don't accept a lot of them. Uh, but it just depends on how you document it. A good pull request will always be accepted, and I always love seeing it. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.